All right, back. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. All that good stuff. It's been a little bit of a break. Um, I don't know why. It just has been. So uh, uh, a lot of requests from uh, different people over these uh, last couple months to do some different things. Uh, people giving suggestions, maybe do some simpler things, uh, some more basic things for beginning students, things like that. Um, uh, a good friend, uh, a shout out to a good friend, Dave Caps, who I uh, haven't talked to since high school days, or not much anyway, since then, uh, decides he wants to play the drums. He uh, calls the school, uh, unfortunately lives in Alabama, and he calls the school and says, hey man, what should I do? How do I get drums? How do, where's a good teacher? What do I look for? So I go through all the things uh, with him, and then he says he watches all my videos, uh, and, uh, he, and that's fun, right? Uh, and uh, I appreciate that. And uh, so he knows more about my videos than I do, and he's telling me about different things. And he had a suggestion. One of the things is to, uh, to do some simpler things as he's just starting out. Uh, so I said, that's a good idea. Um, so that's where this video comes in. I'm going to try to make it as short as I can. Because uh, I don't know if you've noticed in the past, occasionally I tend to uh, talk a little uh, during the video. But, you know, I feel as though the lesson should be a relationship and not just be instruction all the time. Because there's nothing more boring than just a lecture. Okay. Um, and, uh, and this isn't a lecture. So uh, as I instruct, uh, you know, I like to have some uh, uh, discussion with the students as well. So there you go. Um, so I appreciated the advice, and I had another student who said the same thing. So I said, okay, first of the year, I'm going to give you seven, uh, and again, if you're a student of mine, you've heard me say this, but if you're not a student, it's still good advice. Uh, I'm going to give you seven foundational rhythms, basic rhythms, that you should be able to play as good as any drummer in your town, as is, is, is good as any drummer in your state, as good as any drummer in the country. As a matter of fact, uh, when you come into my studio here, I have all these great uh, inspirational drummers on the wall, and I tell my students, you have to be able to play these rhythms as good as these guys on the wall. Now, they might be able to play them faster than you. That's not what I mean. You need to play them at the basic, let's say, between 80 and 130 bit beats a minute. You've got to be able to play these rhythms so well that nearly no one else can play them better than you. And as a matter of fact, you're pretty much equal with anyone else because they're simple rhythms. Um, we had a teacher here who had a degree from Harvard in physics, a math whiz. The guy was fantastic. However, he wasn't smarter than me with 2 plus 2. I, I knew just as well as he did that 2 plus 2 was 4. And it didn't matter what his degree was and all his Harvard training about physics. He knew a lot more about math than I did, but that one true thing uh, was true, no matter if I went to Harvard or not. So, uh, so, so 2 plus 2 is 4. These foundational rhythms are simple rhythms. Everyone should know them, and everyone should be able to play them, as well as Jeff Picaro, um, Neil Pert, uh, Dennis Chambers, Buddy Rich, Steve Smith, Dave Weckl, Vinny Kaliuta. Okay, uh, and Vinny's over here too. So if you sit down at the drums, it should be natural, it should be comfortable. One guy might groove a little better or whatever, but it, it, it basically the same. You put a metronome on 120, you should be able to nail these patterns. Because if you're going for a gig or you're going for an audition or whatever, you've got to be equally as good as the next guy. Hopefully, there's some other tricks. If you've been watching some of my videos, you probably catch some of those tricks. But as far as basic playing, it's got to be rock solid. Okay. Um, first rhythm. Basic, back in black kind of rhythm, right? And uh, eighth notes. We're going to play eighth notes. Of course, quarter notes. Ride variations are up to you. You know, you can play these different ride variations. I'm just talking the basic eighth note, quarter note patterns. We could expand on it. Okay, basic one. Number one. Got to be able to play it, right? Super smooth, no problem, not even thinking about it. Got to be able to play it. Now, you could do some nuance. You could do shaft of the stick, tip of the stick, get some different grooves. You could put some little buzz stroke. That's great. That makes you who you are. That's fantastic. The basic pattern, got to nail it, no questions asked. Okay, the next one, uh, another foundational rhythm. Okay, somewhere up here there's going to be this rhythm on the screen. All right, number four, 
or on the number four in the sheet I'm looking at, but number three in your heart. Okay, the third one. Okay, don't don't uh, neglect your ride symbol. Your ride symbol's your friend. He's in a different neighborhood. He's in this neighborhood of the drums, but n nonetheless, it's a nice neighborhood. Don't neglect the ride symbol. Foundational uh, uh, number four. Okay, nice strong backbeat, right? It's it's the it's the Todd Suckerman thing about the bass drum, snare drum. He talks about that in some videos. Strong backbeat, strong kick, right? Uh, he likes to build from the bottom up. Strong kick, strong backbeat. It's not the Barry Manilow Trio that we're playing in, right? This is these are rock rhythms, foundational rhythms, strong. Okay, uh, we're not. There's no room for uh, uh, being apprehensive here. Strong. I think that's a different rhythm, though. Okay. Um, next one. All right. Moving on. Uh, back over here in this neighborhood with the ride symbol. Okay, one more. Okay. Uh, let's see. And then uh, two left. Uh, one more. Or the next one, I should say. And the last one. Okay, so doesn't matter traditional grip, matched grip. I think I did half traditional, half matched, whatever. That's another question. How should I play? Traditional, match, match, traditional. I would I tell people play matched grip. I, I learned traditional grip for 30 years. I switched to match just to play matched. It's true that I do play probably differently when I play match grip than when I play traditional. I have much more um, uh, nuance and I'm able to do way more intricate things traditional, but that's just because I played traditional for 30 years before I went to match. It would be the same for anybody. Uh, if you played match for 30 years and switched traditional, you'd probably have your intricate stuff you could play match. So, but the point is, that's not something you should worry about as a beginning student. You should probably just grab your sticks, match grip, find a good teacher somewhere that's going to teach you good fundamentals. And, uh, and match grip is fine. If you want to tinker around with traditional, that's fine too. Uh, if you're older, teenager, maybe thinking about marching band, sooner rather than later, you might want to look into traditional because it's tough to make that transition during the summer sessions uh, when you're doing all your uh, rehearsals and things. That's kind of tough. So you want to be a little proactive with that. But in general, Matched grip, easier to learn, no worries. Okay, uh, so there was seven. Now, of course, we have uh, we could do um, we could do quarter note ride, right? So we same thing. Uh, so ride variations are up to you. Uh, so okay, um, and so on. Uh, say, don't forget again. Don't forget about your ride symbol. There you have it. And then, uh, and just, and this is a bonus, bonus, because I'm done with the rhythms. Uh, I wasn't thinking about this, but I just thought of it now. Transition, right? Transition, transition fill, right? So everybody knows the, the basic, uh, sort of the around the drum set. <laughs> fill, which by the way, I hope I never play that live, just so you know. I, I don't know, there's just something about it. But anyway, um, but it's a good foundational fill, right? You gotta know how to do it. Um, I, I often say if you want to spice it up just a little bit, put the bass drum on that last 16th note, okay? One, and, uh, it just, for me, sounds a little better. Usually, 
little spark to it, uh, and most people learn the 16th notes anyway. So one and a two and a three and a four and a one. Okay, practice these, I'd say, between 80 and 130 on your metronome. Where's my metronome? 108. Transitional fills, there you go, seven, maybe eight, I don't know. You'll see them on the screen. Seven rhythms you should be able to play as well as anybody between the beats of 80 and 120. Sure, Jeff Picaro could groove better than everybody else. Weckl's a groove meister. All these guys, great. Maybe they can maybe groove it. That comes with time. Maybe you could groove it better than them, right? I mean, you don't know. So these are foundational. Everyone should be able to play them rock solid. There should be no weakness in your foundational patterns, foundational fills. There, I gave you a bonus fill um, to mess around. I could have did the triplet. Uh, maybe we'll save that for another time. Okay, but uh, the 16th note fill and then the 16th note with the bass drum on the last note. Use some of those transitions, work on some things. Pick up uh, some of those books from uh, the previous video or maybe the videos after this. I don't know which one. I'm making a bunch of videos today. but. Uh, It'll help you with all this stuff, but practice these, get them down, go back and forth. Don't forget about your right symbol. Hey, don't forget about your floor tom. You know, the floor tom, a lot of grooves. Don't forget about your crash symbol, right? You're in a heavier band. four-way independence, all kinds of stuff you can do, but foundationally you want to get rock solid with those rhythms and you want to be able to play them as, as good as anyone you know or anybody, I don't care, Taylor Hawkins, whoever you like, um, you want to be able to rock these out. You might not have as long hair as Taylor Hawkins, but um, you should be able to rock them out. Okay, I got more videos coming. Practice, practice, practice. Seriously though, Learn these like nothing. You sit down and you just rock them. And ride variations are, are really important. I think I'm saving that for a different video. But um, quarter note, eighth note, basic, right? So you learn those with these patterns. Don't forget about the friendly neighborhood over here by your ride symbol. It's a nice neighborhood. Don't neglect it. Um, and, uh, and, and don't forget about your floor tom, too, for ride. So you have three possibilities, hi-hat, ride symbol, floor tom. Practice, practice, practice. Um, have fun. Nail these. See you next time.